Hi, I'm Barry Foster, Director of the Tipton County Museum, Veterans Memorial, and Nature Center in Covington, Tennessee. And I'm also an art teacher, and in starting January 31st, I'm going to be teaching watercolor botanicals on Tuesday nights for four weeks from 6 to 8 p.m. at the museum. You can register by calling the museum at 901-476-0242. Today I'm going to show you how much fun painting in watercolor can be, so let's get started. Before I begin painting, I'd like to show you some of the materials I'm using today. I'm using watercolor paper. This is a pad of Canson cold press watercolor paper. Any, any watercolor paper will do. I have my paper taped down to a piece of foam board, and then I sketched my apple with a number two pencil. I have a kneaded eraser here. I went over it lightly to get rid of the excess graphite. Now we're painting flat because if you paint upright, the watercolor runs. So watercolor is generally painted flat or at a very slight angle. The watercolor I'm using today is tube watercolor. I'm using American Journey and Da Vinci watercolors. Any tube watercolor or basically any watercolor will do. I'm using Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Sour Lemon, and Permanent Red. My brush today, I'm going to start off with this one. This is a number 14 round. We have clean water here. This is my palette. And I've spritzed my watercolor. I'm going to be demoing a wet into wet method. So we're going to wet our brush and we're going to wet the paper just inside the apple. Just inside, not too much. If you get too much on there, you can just wipe it off. And if there's not enough, you just add more. So I have my, my apple pretty soaked here. This is my model here. It's just a paper mache apple. We're gonna start off with our yellow. So I've made a little wash, and I'm starting on the upper left. I'm looking at my light source, which is mostly from the upper, my upper left. And I'm putting in the yellow. I'm rinsing my brush, and I'm going to add some permanent red. The magic of watercolor is you can put one color directly into another color and they mix on the paper. Here I have excess water on my brush and so I'm taking the base of it and getting the excess water out on a sponge. I'm adding the red in there. Now this is a very warm red. I'm going directly in the yellow and then back on the paper. I can see I'm drying up a little bit. So I'm going to go back and add a little clear water to soften those edges. So I'm adding water back on the paper. Excess water goes right into either the sponge or a rag. Now I'm going to be adding a cool red, my alizarin crimson. So dip it in there and I make a wash on my palette, dab the excess, and I'm going right into the other paint. And actually, I don't know if you can see it real clearly or not, but I'm leaving a couple spots totally without paint, and this is on purpose. When you're painting in watercolor, the paper shines through and you can leave some of the paper white and that actually gives it some sparkle. I like to do that when I'm painting in watercolor. And I'm going around 
around the edge a little bit. Some more. Here I'm adding a little more water to soften those edges. This is going to be a very loose apple, loosely painted, without sharp edges. I'm going to add a little more yellow in the top here. I'm going back in with a little yellow. And it's okay to move the paint around with the brush once it's already on the paper. That's part of the fun of it. Now I'm going to add a little blue for the shadow. Underneath here, it's darker. So we're going to add our ultramarine blue. We don't need much. Now I'm going to soften those edges and mix it in. I'm going to go back and add a little more red. Watercolor dries lighter on the paper than when it's wet. So this is this dark now, it's going to dry a lot lighter. So that's something to keep in mind as you're painting. Now we're going to let that dry for a moment. Now that it's dry, it just takes a few minutes to dry depending on the humidity. What I had done is I just took a hair dryer to it. That's perfectly acceptable. We're almost finished with this apple, just a little bit more. One thing is, this apple's coming along nicely, but it looks like it's floating. So we want to give it a little bit of a ledge so it, it, it's just not floating in air. So we're going to give it a ledge, and then we're going to add the stem. Again, I'm going to do some wet into wet. So I'm going to wet the paper, and we're going to make it kind of in a flattish oval shape because the cast shadow 
will be fairly round from the light. And shadows actually are just deeper colors of what they're reflecting. So in this case, it's the same colors we've been using. We're going to do some Lizarin Crimson. We're going to put a little bit of that red, that permanent red in there. Let those colors mix. And then we're going to add some of that cool blue. is that that blue and that red will turn it to a beautiful purple and that's okay. We're not so concerned about colors here as we are darks and lights. Now we're going to finish off the top. I'm going to take some of that blue. There's an indentation here in that apple so we're going to make a little semi-circle, like a half-moon crescent circle around in the top. Same brush. There we go, just enough, a hint. And actually, on my palette, I'm going to mix some blue with some red on my palette to come up with a little bit of a darker color to actually make that stem. So I've got some red and some blue here. I'm going to mix it up on my palette. I'm going to dab off the excess. And let me get that point sharp and I'm going to be going up. And there, we're done. One thing I'd like to mention about caring for your brushes, which I, I think is real important, don't leave your brushes in your water. Rinse them out well, and then lay them out flat to dry and your brushes should last a long, long time. Here's our apple. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you at the Tipton County Museum in Covington. We're located at 751 Burt Johnston Avenue in beautiful, historic Covington, Tennessee, so I hope you come visit me. Thank you.